So the unit name is measurement, valuation, disclosure of assets. So when we see a financial statement like a balance sheet, we say assets, liability, equity. So today we are going to discuss about assets. Very important for financial report. So you can see these are all current assets, means they will be, uh, their useful life will be one year. And we will see the account receivable, inventory, uh, cash flows, and we will see how we measure these inventories. So inventory, after reading this chapter, you will be an expert of uh, looking from management point of view, from a financial reporting point of view, what things you need to understand. Always remember that CMA is not an accounting qualification, it's a management qualification. So what important areas are for management, these are in the topics. So the accounts receivable, inventory, uh, these are the most important for the management because account receivable brings money for you and you pay the salaries and other expenses from there. And inventory based on your asset, which you are going to sell and convert them into sales. So these both are very, very important aspects. Let's look about the account receivable. So they are also called as a trade receivable because when we sell own credit, when we sell own credit, so we get uh, the sales trade. It's a trade activity. So account receivable and trade receivable are almost the same. Now, as we already know that in, in every business, we have two types of assets. One are current assets and one are non-current uh, assets. So they have been divided into accounts. So this is, now we are talking about accounts receivable. So they have some sections. So there is a current and there is a non-current. So current accounts are those who are in balance sheet and we show them at net realizable value. So what are those net realizable value is that if you see any balance sheet, you will see that say count receivable less allowance for receivable. So this will call your NRV net realizable value. This is a formula, very simple. You have to take the totals of your account receivable and how much allowance you will create like 5%, 10%. What is an allowance is also a very uh, interesting thing to discuss. Allowance, provision, uh, these are two words. Means you have a fear that if you have 100 receivables, so maybe five will not come. So we create an allowance for these five, allowance or provision, for doubtful debt, for bad debts, for, for uh, things that can go out of our hands, we create an allowance. So this is the term for allowance. And for long-term receivables, we don't calculate them on NRV. NRV is only for current receivables. We, we do a present value of the future cash flow. That is in CMA part two, more in our discussion in detail. So we will discuss there. So far, you should know for solving your question that receivables are current and non-current. Current receivables are classified as NRV, net realizable value. What is net realizable value? Gross value of anything less the allowance net realizable value. Now let's talk about some accounting which is not required for your exam. Uh, there is no question related to your knowledge about debit and credit. So you don't need to worry at all. But because the book is written to explain you like this way, so I will explain you. When we make a sale, sale is your income, income increase will be credited. So he will credit the sales. And from income, if the cash has been received, we'll say the cash debit, cash is an asset, increase in asset will be debited. And uh, if it is not a cash, only promise that we will pay after 30 days, 60 days, then this is an account receivable. Account receivable is uh, your asset, your current asset. So this will be a entry. So for cash sales, cash to sales, for money that has not been received, account receivable to sales is both way around. Recognition. So 
Now, if there is a sale return, sometimes we sell and customer don't like it or uh, feel it appropriate. So they return you. When they return, obviously the receivable will reduce. Uh, so what we will, and sale will also reduce. So what we will do is we will return the sale into a different account. Because if we will debit in the sales account, it will be confusing. So they make a separate account called sale return. In any time I need to see only my sale returns, I can see the ledger of the sale return. And on the other hand, allowance for sale return will present. So this is how it is going to work. Now, allowance for uncollectible account and bad debts expense. What does it mean? Suppose you sell to the hundred receivable people. Not all will be honest, loyal, committed, professional. Some will be the bad guys. Uh, they always, there are people like this who want to ditch you. So in that case, before they ditch you, as a management accountant, I will put a provision or an allowance. That might be five, six, depending on my assessment. We have a credit department who assess that this customer can default or not. So based on their assessments, we will do the allowance or the provision. So I guess this concept is clear that provision for uncollectible accounts. Uncollectible means those who will not pay us, we will think in advance. What And what is bad debts? That, that is a word from received, that is British word, There are good debtors and there are bad debtors. Good debtors are those, so those who give you money on time. So they are good they, because they are giving you money on time. So you don't write them good because they are good automatically. We just say receivables, debtors. Uh, but what is bad debts? Bad debts are those debtors or receivables who has called you, informed you by email or by a letter that we are not going to pay. Means they, there's no doubt about it. You are confirmed that they has been closed down, uh, they are being liquidated, they are no more in business or they are unable to pay you. These are the scenarios where we will not, we will put out things from allowance because now it is confirmed. Allowance is a fear, is a provision that it may happen, but it didn't happen yet. So what is the bad debt? Bad debt is an announced debtor who is not going to pay you. That is an expense and obviously it's going to decrease your receivable also. So bad debt expense will an allowance for uh, uncollectible will be credited. Now, how we measure, how uh, is gonna me measure it? So we have two uh, methods, percentage of sale method and percentage of receivable method. Means one is income method and one is expense method. These are two methods that can be very helpful for us. Now I will teach you how to calculate both. So, but before that, so if I want to calculate the allowance, I have to see what is the income. So it will be an income approach. So in income statement, I have sales. So I, so if in the question, in your real exam, if he's going to tell you that calculate account receivable allowance. So by using a sale method, so we will first find the information of income statement and particularly the amount called sales. So we'll take the sales and uh, we will see what is the percentage. The other method is the balance. We will find categorically account receivable in the balance sheet, which new name is statement of financial position and take a percentage of that. So you should be very clear when he says sales, so go in income statement, takes the percentage of the same. When he says go to the 
uh, go to the balance sheet. So go in the balance sheet and find account receivable and take the percentage.